Okay, the next group that uh, we would asked to be uh, sort of gathering around, uh, uh, Dr. Jeff Blay, Blaya, Dr. Wayne McElwraith, Dr. Sue Stover, Dr. Preston Hickman, Dr. Reed McClellan, and Sarah Dorman. And while we're getting uh, this transition, I think uh, Mr. Nick Nicholson, of uh, President of Keeneland, would like to make some remarks. The way this lighting is, I can't see him, but I'm hoping Nick is coming towards the uh, stadium. Welcome, Nick. <laughs> thank you, Ed. Just on behalf of everyone at Keeneland, we'd like to thank you all for coming to this. Uh, when we first heard about the concept of a summit, we were about halfway through the first sentence and said, count us in. Uh, it's a great idea, and uh, we hope it continues for many years. I think one of the best things about it is that the meeting in October, as you're hearing this morning already, that uh, this was not just a day and a half meeting where some ideas were kicked around and then promptly put on the shelf, as so often happens in the industry. The follow-up work of the committees and the uh, work between the first session and the session, second session to us is the most exciting thing about this whole prospect. Uh, we are. Uh, this is, uh, in our way of thinking, uh, a journey. Uh, if there is a revolution going on about the care and modernization of horse safety and welfare, and we certainly hope that it is, uh, we think we're at the beginning of the revolution, not at the end. And uh, uh, that's the way we should approach this. We, we should always continue to do better and better. This is an area where there will be no final victories. This is not a, this is no final victories here. This is a journey where we have to keep going. So uh, on behalf of Keeneland, we'd like to welcome you all to Keeneland. Want to make sure uh, our office is right at the top of the hill. Uh, Betsy Baxter is my assistant. And anything that we can do to help uh, your visit here uh, uh, be easier if you need an office, if you need anything at all, if you have any problems, please come up. And we'd like uh, to be of assistance any way we can to you. If you also have an idea on the facilities of how we could make this better or make your your, your stay better or anything we, we need to do from a facility wise, please let me know. Uh, we're honored that you're here. We'd like to thank uh, the Grayson Foundation and Ed, uh, the Jockey Club, and Dan Fick and their staffs for all the hard work that you all have done on this. This is a great idea and let's keep it going for many, many years. Thank you all very much. Okay, the first uh, presentation in this section will be delivered by Dr. Jeff Blea. This is the subject is non-catastrophic injuries. And uh, Dr. Blea is a thoroughbred practitioner in Southern California, president of the Southern California Equine Foundation. I'm also pleased to say that he serves on the research advisory committee of the Grayson Jockey Club Research Foundation. Dr. Jeff Blea. Thank you, Ed, and good morning to everybody. Uh, this presentation that I'm going to give this morning is a collaborative effort between the Southern California Equine Foundation, which is a nonprofit organization in Southern California which operates hospitals on both racetracks, Hollywood Park and Del Mar. It was established in the 1970s, and the membership includes owners, trainers, and veterinarians. A lot of the data you're going to see this morning has been compiled through the efforts of the racetrack practitioners practitioners in Southern California. Without their efforts, we would have no data. Uh, the second part of this equation is Dr. McElraith. Uh, he's been working on this data with us for the last two years as to what do we do with it, how do we interpret it, where do we go with it. The data you're going to see is strictly raw data. It has not been statistically analyzed. It is nothing more than data we've collected and we are looking through as to where do we need to go and what do we need to do. It's a, basically a pilot program that we started in 2006. It was started after we've had a, in 2005, we had a very difficult year as far as breakdowns occurred. As veterinarians, we hear all the stories. We see the stories, we know the truth in a lot of the cases. So we decided as a group of practitioners, rather than blame the racetrack, let's see how much the racetrack factors into these training injuries as well as into the catastrophic breakdowns. I'll deliver information on training injuries to today. Dr. Stover will talk about the catastrophic breakdown program as well later. So without further ado, let's go ahead and begin. The, 
The aim of the study, as I just stated, was to obtain baseline data on day-to-day -day injury rates and thoroughbred racehorses in California. The Grayson project that Dr. McElroy did a couple years ago, which involved many practitioners in Southern California, Dr. Baker, Dr. Arthur, and myself, showed there was a high attrition rate amongst horses in training. Everyone knows the, the real uh, dollar loss is significant to the owners and as well as to the industry. More importantly, it affects all of us who work in the industry. What we wanted to do was to examine the changes in the injury rate on the dirt because that's what we were running on at the time. As things grew, especially in California based on the mandate, synthetic, synthetic tracks quite gained popularity and were installed. In 2006, Hollywood Park installed Cushion Track. They began training on that track and racing on that track in the fall of 2006. 2007, Del Mar installed Poly Track, and that was the first season of Poly Track. In 2007, uh, Cushion Track was installed at Santa Anita. Oak Tree ran the first meet on that surface. Ever since that time, all three tracks in California have been training on some type of synthetic track. The data collected here, or you're going to see here today, is a combination of dirt and synthetic track surface data, as well as some turf intermixed amongst that data. The five methods we use to collect that data, it's a variable uh, system. The first topic we're going to look at is surgery data at the Southern California Equine Foundation. The Equine Foundation operates two hospitals, one at Santa Anita, one at Hollywood Park. And basically, I've gone through the last five years and collected surgery data from 2002 through 2007. And some of the findings are, are actually quite interesting to see. We're going to assume essentially that referrals out of the racetrack are similar from a year to year basis. And this data does not include Del Mar, which is usually from the middle of July to the beginning of September, because at Del Mar, we're strictly a radiograph and endoscopic facility. We do not offer surgery services through our uh, foundation. Secondly, we did a 90-day perspective study, which was our pilot study, looking at non-catastrophic injuries. This was begun in the fall of 2006, and this is where we took our first steps, getting racetrack practitioners involved, trying to figure out a tracking system, a monitoring system, and the input from the practitioners to identify injuries that we were having in a 90-day period. I'll break it down between racetracks, Santa Anita and Hollywood Park. In 2006, as I stated, Santa Anita was still dirt. Hollywood Park had been training on cushion track for about 60 days when this was instituted. Documentation of injuries at Del Mar in 2007. We, uh, Dr. McElrath and I looked at 2007 as a finite period of time. We had a seven week period of time where we had a synthetic track surface. We reinstituted the injury monitoring program in Southern California and looking at a specific 45 day interval. And that's the information I'll present later. Along with that, uh, we came across some important data which we included in our methods, which was a comparison of radiographic findings, which led us to a conclusion that I'll talk about in a few, in a few minutes. At the equine facility, uh, we offer radiology services seven days a week at the on-track. Veterinarian makes an appointment, the horse goes down, the uh, anatomy that's of interest to that veterinarian is x-rayed. As a, as a foundation, we can track the number of patients that, that, that we see at that hospital on a daily basis as well as an annual basis. In addition to the number of patients, we can track the number of radiographs taken. So number four is going to correlate to the decrease in actual number of patients radiographed in Del Mar 2006 versus 2007 as well as the number of studies taken. And then number five is some additional data that I put in there. As a racetrack practitioner, we have a uh, large practice in Southern California, Von Blucher, Blea, and Hunkin is the name of our practice. And I went through and looked at all our data the last five years, 2003 through 2007. And uh, the proof is in the pudding in some of the data that I collected, nuclear scintigraphy, ultrasounds, and radiographic studies based on the total number of patients. Uh, there was quite interesting findings that I'll discuss as we go through this. Okay, the first method that we used was tracking the surgeries in the Southern California Equine Foundation. As you see on this chart, 2002 is at the top, 2007 at the bottom. The most notable thing to look at here is total number of arthroscopic surgeries from 2006 to 2007 is decreased by 15.8%. Again, you have to keep in mind, 2007, two-thirds of the year, or excuse me, Half of the year, two tracks were synthetic, half were, or half were synthetic, half was dirt. So you have to keep that in mind as far as the dates go. 
Condylar fracture repair is 2006, 2007. In 2007, we had a 19.6 reduction in condylar fracture repairs at the Equine Foundation. And if you look at 2005, we had a tremendous increase, and that, I think, was kind of the, uh, the tip, you know, the, the final straw that led us to start looking at some of this injury data, and it's probably kind of what related to the fact that California was so interested in synthetic racetracks because we had such a bad year in 2005. I don't know why. I'm assuming it's probably related to several factors, including weather, maintenance, track composition, so forth and so on, that other people will talk about later. Secondly, our pilot program tracking all injuries that was begun in the fall of 06 with Dr. McRaith and I, we included all the veterinarians on the backside. We petitioned their help. Any of you that have dealt with racetrack practitioners, you know they're always in a hurry and always late. Uh, that was a challenge that we faced. It was difficult to get track practitioners to sit down and fill out the data on a consistent daily ma uh, basis. Uh, we had a the same group that always participates in our programs, participated in this program, and we had full cooperation. We always have some outliers that makes it difficult where I think their numbers would be useful. There's a real concern with trainer confidentiality. Um, again, we have the same group of trainers who always participate in our studies, whether it's through Davis or CSU or Grayson. We also have a number of trainers who have some useful information that are reluctant to participate based upon confidentiality. So as Dr. Scalay stated, that confidentiality is important if we want to get useful numbers from uh, trainers on the backside. There are a group or a population that are willing to help us, but I think we can get a larger uh, subset of numbers that will be more useful if we, if we provide that confidentiality to these trainers. The uh, third challenge we face is it's difficult to obtain a total number of horses in racing in Southern California because there's ship in, ship out, horses get hurt, horses go to the farm. So uh, to the best of my knowledge, there's probably some people in the audience who can, who can address this, but it's very difficult to determine other than going through each trainer's training chart on a day-to-day -day basis how many horses are on that track at any particular time. Uh, you can look through the insurance record through the workman's comp group as long as they're all signed up with that group. You can go through individually and hand count them. But it's a challenge that we faced when we were looking at ours. So we basically went upon the input from the racetrack practitioners in Southern California. So looking at that pilot program in Hollywood, at Hollywood Park, Hollywood Park at this time was training on cushion track, 1116 to 12607. We recorded 52 injuries, and I'm going to go through these real quick because I haven't tabulated towards the end. Uh, most of our injuries in Southern California typically are the front fetlocks. What was interesting to note here, uh, these are shin injuries. We, have tw we had 12 carpal injuries at the in the cushion track in the fall of 06. Fetlock injuries were actually less than carpal injuries. Splint bone injuries, there was one. Pastern injuries, one. Suspensory, two seven cases of tendonitis or tendonitis or superficial flexor tendon injury, two pelvic injuries, nine tibial stress fractures. Santa Anita, from November 18th through February 10th, we recorded 60 injuries. Again, during this time, Santa Anita was training on dirt. This was before the installation of cushion track. Seven shin injuries, only five carpal injuries on the dirt at Santa Anita. Fetlock injuries total 21 during this time frame. Pastern injuries one, radius one, shoulder four. Splint bones were three, suspensory ligament injuries, N equals eight, five reports of tendonitis, one pelvic injury, and four tibial stress fractures. So it was in an interesting comparison between the synthetic and the dirt during the same time period. These horses are some horses are in training at Santa Anita. They ship over to run at Hollywood. Some are training in Hollywood and run at Hollywood during this time period. So there's a crossover a little bit, but for the most part, you can assume where their training is where the injuries occurred, not necessarily the track that they ran on. So if we look at a total, this is a compilation of, zone, of those injuries from November to January. Uh, again, what was interesting to me when I looked through this, and, and Wayne and I discussed this, was the number of carpal injuries. And as a practitioner, when you check horses on a daily basis, we noticed that we'd see more problems in the carpus, more effusion, more pain on palpation, whether it was a carpitis or whether it was a musculoskeletal problem diagnosed via radiography, it would depend on the case. But this was an interesting finding in, in, in our minds as to an increase in carpus injuries during this time frame. 
you look at Santa Anita, this is more traditional to what we see in our practice where we see a, an increased number of fetlock injuries. Again, relatively the same time frame. We had some outliers, but we included them in this whole uh, time frame as well. One thing to note was there was an increased number of injuries at Santa Anita as opposed to Hollywood Park, 60 at Santa Anita, 52 at Hollywood Park. A note to that is at Hollywood Park during this time frame, when Hollywood Park opened in September of 06, you would have thought they were giving money away because every trainer and owner wanted to be there. The entire backside was full. Uh, so that, that, that's something to put into this equation. The, the number of total horses training at Hollywood Park during this time frame was they were full to capacity, yet they had fewer injuries in Santa Anita, which was still training on conventional dirt. The third method we used was Del Mar, the finite period of time. It was a 45-day meet. Basically, we tracked injuries. We reinstituted the injury monitoring program amongst veterinarians. Same challenges as we had before, veterinarian compliance, apathy, that sort of thing. Uh, 42 total injuries reported, 23 of which were tendon ligament soft tissue, which is about 54%. Uh, it's not far off from what Dr. Scalia's chart showed. What was interesting to note here was, as a, an opinion, I don't think we saw an increase in tendon and ligament soft tissue. I think we saw a decrease in musculoskeletal bone joint injuries. And I'll show that in method four. So I'm pretty confident in saying this wasn't an increase in soft tissue. It was actually a, a decrease in bone and joint. And that'll show in this graph here, this bar, table. What this is is a table of radiographs. As I stated before, we can track number of radiographic studies as well as number of radiographic exams taken. And starting at the top left, this is in the top middle, excuse me, this is Del Mar 2005, 2006, 2007. It's the same time of year every year. Uh, the barn area is full to capacity and we do a lot of radiographs there in the past. In 2005, 6,300 radiographs were taken. 2006, 6,000 radiographs were taken. 2007, 45, over 4,500 radiographs were taken. There was a, about a 24% decrease in the number of radiographs taken in 2007. If you recall, 2007 was the first year Del Mar ran on the poly track. So we saw a benefit there looking at it from this, from this angle, that we had a reduction in bone and joint injuries as we correlate back to number three. The number of patients radiographed, which is not in this chart, it was, there was a 15% decrease in the number of patients and a 25% decrease in the number of films taken. The fifth and final part of the method of our uh, preliminary work is basically a look at our practice, which I looked at 2003 to th through 2007. I omitted 2005 because our data got corrupted as we transferred to a different program, and that's a um, headache amongst, uh, into itself. So if we look at this, and this is basically just three highlights, ultrasonogra ultrasonographic examinations. 2007, there were 293 versus 2006, 297. This number is relatively static, and it's statistically insignificant. One thing to note is in 2006 and 2007, we had a total population of about 3,300 patients. 2003 and 2004, we had a total population of approximately 2,800 patients. So we saw a 500 count increase in patients, but we saw no increase in ultrasound examinations in our practice. Radiographs, the same thing. We had a slight increase in 2007, but again, we had a 500, N equals 500 increase in total number of patients and not a statistically significant increase in the number of radiographs. Nuclear scintigraphies, these are the number of scans that have been done. The total number of patients is lower because we do have some repeat scans. Again, we see an increase here. However, it doesn't account statistically significantly for the number of increased patients in the last two years of our practice. In summary, 2007 versus 2006, there's been, we, had, we saw a decrease in arthroscopic surgeries and condylar fracture repairs at the Southern California Equine Foundation. Some of it may be related to synthetic, some of it may not be because we were not consistently running on synthetic tracks on a year-round basis. The baseline data for non-catastrophic injury gives us a little bit of direction as to where do we need to go, how do we need to collect it. Uh, where our problems were and where they are going to be in the future. The specific incidents at Del Mar show that we felt there was a decrease in bone and joint injury problems as 
reflected in the number of radiographs taken or the decrease in radiograph taken, which was statistically significant. And based upon our practice data as a private practice, we saw no increase in soft tissue injuries on synthetic tracts based upon ultrasound, examination, ultrasound examinations and or nuclear scintigraphy findings. So where do we need to go? I think we need a couple things, and the industry has to get involved. Um, we need the participation of the veterinarians. Th that's a difficult mountain to climb because, as everyone knows, everyone's busy, everybody's doing their own thing. So we're working on a system to try to engage the veterinarians. Uh, they have to want to cooperate. We have to get them. We have to enfranchise them to want to be able to help us track these injuries. We need a more user-friendly recording system. As we're doing, as we did it in 06 and 07, uh, we're using a paper recording system. It's cumbersome. You throw the papers in your car, you never see them again, you forget to fill them out. If we had the ability to have a more user-friendly recording system, I think, that would in, I think that would enfranchise more veterinarians to get involved because it would reduce their time expense to, uh, to participate. And we need trainer confidentiality to know that this is for the greater good of the industry, not as a method of record keeping or a method of regulation. Thank you very much.